I'm taking his place for just one day. And uh, today the class is about the tactile design pattern. So, but before we enter in, uh, in the subject, we have to do a small uh, introduction about abstract classes. And uh, have you ever heard about abstract classes before? Yes, no? Well, why we need abstract classes is explained later. But first, let's see what are abstract classes. So, abstract classes. If you notice, interfaces all the times, they, they are completely abstract in the sense that you always say signature and that's it. And, uh, but, and the other way around, when you deal with classes, everything is concrete. Right? So if you define a class, then you have to put the attributes, you have to put the, 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 the methods with the body. And sometimes there is a necessity for something in the between. Okay? So for example, you know that you have, and this is the next example. For example, you know that, for example, you have uh, a class or an entity weapon, okay, which for sure has a method, I don't know, for example, uh, fire, but again, you don't know what is going inside the fire because it depends on the kind of weapon, because there are different kind of weapons, so every weapon has its own way of firing. But you know that all these weapons, they share what we call the, the ammos, right? So ammos is something complete. In, 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 more precise, it's an integer, integer. And uh, whereas the fire is something that you would like to leave it abstract and you want to decide it later on what, how to implement it or not. So, abstract classes allow you this. And uh, the, in auditor orientation, it is possible to design these special classes that contain methods and bodies, and, uh, and some without. And these are unique called abstract classes. So for example, here is the example of a weapon. We have a weapon abstract class, which contains a field of that integer called amount of bullets, and uh, OK, a constructor, where you simply set up the amount of bullets. And then look here, for example, we have a get method over the amount of bullets. And look, there's a body here. So what we do here is actually we are returning the amount of bullets. And here we leave the fire empty. So just a signature, as if it's an interface. So, and as you can see here, some pieces are missing. Some pieces are complete. So it's a half complete picture. And for example, if you want to implement this, or this is the same, it's almost one with Java. Almost no differences. And uh, what, what about instantiation? Can you instantiate a, a, a abstract class? Well, not directly. And it actually makes sense because imagine if you, uh, wait a second. Oh, if you were. Now, you finish. Is that bad? Yeah. Sorry, one second. Sir, I think you have to speak up with that camera over there. Right? And I don't think we will be able to hear you if we're going to watch the video there. I'm not joking. But why do you want to hear me? I want to burn. Huh? I want to burn. Ah, no, I'm talking to you. Okay, I can speak louder, but. That will be great. Is this fine? Yes. <laughs> okay. So forced. Okay. So, and does it, it actually makes sense because if you try to instantiate the the, the abstract class weapon, okay, and then given the, the instance weapon, you try to call the method fire. Yeah. What method do you run? Since the body is missing, right? Look, the body is missing. Maybe it's better if I put the left of them. No? Yeah, yeah. I've never done a class here. <laughs> so, Rosa, 
vragen. Oké. Okay. Okay. Zo. So. so does it make sense or not? Maar first of all, can you read this piece of code or is it still too abstract, not the abstract transfer abstract in the in the philosophy? But is it readable? Is it understandable? Yeah. Okay. Easy. And does this statement make sense? New weapon und fire. Who says the slime works? Who says this time doesn't work? And so who says maybe? No. You say maybe. No, not. Huh? No, it was previous, not sure. No, that doesn't work because it's uh, it's like saying a new interface, punta, program manager. No, new interface, yeah. and the same here. So, you can call directly an abstract method, and it's also, and the only way to, to use fire is by means of inheritance. So you have to inherit a weapon in order to use its functionality. Okay, same as for uh, with the interfaces. With the only difference that abstract classes might come with already ready methods and already predefined uh, fields. Okay? And here is an example. So for example, you can define two weapons, concrete weapon. In one case it's a gun, the other one is a fast gun. This is very important because here, inside the constructor of the gun, okay, you get as input the amount of target. Then you have to say, so here you are saying that the base, in this case the base refers to the weapon. We are telling the, the abstract class how to call the, 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 this constructor. So in this case, we are saying that there is a one-one between the arguments of the gun and the arguments, the input of the uh, of the uh, abstract weapon. Okay. And of course, here you have to override the fire. Yeah? And what is the difference between an abstract class and a virtual class? And a virtual class. Or, yeah, I think that's what it's called. No. Maybe I'm confused. No, we say that this one is a virtual method. So for example, fire in this case. Actually, they are, from, from the high level point of view, they are the same. So both are methods without the body. So they are virtual in, in the philosophy. Okay. okay? Yeah. So, and here are two, the example again. So in one case, the gun overrides, so provides a, a, a body for the fire method, and in particular, every time you, you run fire, you decrease the amount of bullets by one, whereas the case of fast gun, you decrease it by, and you call it, you decrease it by two. Okay? So here you have two concrete examples over the same super type weapon. Okay? If you use Java instead, it's almost the same, except for the fact that you don't have the double pull here, followed by base, etc. In the body, you have to say super, which means super is a shortcut, which means the constructor of weapon. So you are, it's likely to say weapon, boom, the constructor, something like that. And here you provide the arguments for the constructor. This is the main big difference between the two worlds. And you don't have to write override next to the name of the method. OK, but these are really small changes that if you ever move from one language to the other, you simply can uh, find it on Google. I don't know, something like override abstract method from c to Java. In the so, so we say that abstract classes are a mean to combine polymorphism with concrete implementation. This is in short. And, uh, okay, this is the first part of this class. So close this one. And now we enter in the, uh, in the half of the class, which is about the factory design pattern. Have you ever heard about the factory design pattern? No? Okay. Well, actually, it's uh, 
sometimes we program stuff that we don't know, we are not aware of what these patterns they are implementing. And I, I think many of you already experienced this design pattern without noticing it. But anyways, oh, I opened the room, but anyways. So the lecture topics. We start with polymorphic constructors and why we need constructors at level of polymorph, at polymorphic level. Remember polymorphic, what is it? Interfaces, inheritance, all those things are all polymorphic. So you have a series of complete classes which can be treated as one polymorphic pattern. So remember, polymorphic is something, an entity that, that represents many entities. Okay, but And we will see how this problem is solved by means of the factory design pattern. And we also just, actually this is wrong, this should not be here because this is in the appendix at the very, very end. Because the asset factory maybe it's, uh, it will be too tight by the time we will reach that. So I put it in the appendix. And then the conclusion. So, the problem. Sometimes, this is uh, often the case that, you know what is the interface type, so the polymorphic that you want to instantiate, but you, you don't know the concrete class to instantiate. This happens a lot of time, and in a bit you see also an example. And also we have a pro the following problem. So we know the interface, we don't know the concrete classes, Okay, but still we would like we wish to define constructors as so we wish to select the concrete type by the interface type. Okay? But this is not possible because interfaces specify no constructors. So most of the times the client program has to specify the client has to write code, specific code for selecting the complete classes. Are you following me? So you have one client that you know what the interface type. You don't know the concrete type. But unfortunately we can't make this selection mechanism in the interface. So what happens is that the client every time has to write down this selection mechanism so then to select the concrete type. Okay? So this is the conditional inclined code to determine which could be class essential. And we know this is not good because this is the repetition. Every client who wishes to use our structure, our polymorphic types, has to repeat this selection mechanism every time. So repeat, 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 and you know the the the, uh, the what is it? The, the keep it now. The don't don't repeat yourself. It's one of the solid principles. So don't you start repeating pieces of code that has a lot of semantic, then you are not doing it properly. So ideally we wish to capture it as we did during the second block of the to use the methods and classes, etc. So in particular today we are going to study the pattern design pattern, which is a creation pattern. And uh, this moves the construction logic to a new class and uh, just Keep it short. The idea is that we are going to simulate constructors at polymorphic level. Okay? And when we call these constructors virtual constructors. So you, you have a constructor, but it's still virtual because you don't know how to implement what you see this. Thing. Okay? So consider this example. We have a series of animals, complete animals, and uh, the interface the polymorphic animal. And we want, we wish now to consume our animals. So we want to read an ID of an animal and then instantiate it. But unfortunately this piece of logic, we cannot put it in the interface. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? So we have some we, there's already a semantic here. We have an ID, and based on ID, we select an animal. And uh, it makes sense to put it in animal, but animal, the way we wrote it, the way we told you so far, it's an interface. An interface accepts only signatures. Not possible. So, what a very someone who doesn't know anything 
about factories, you would most likely write this code explicitly in the client program. Okay? So, something like this. So the client, this is a client code, you have a collection of animals, you start reading, parsing the console, and if it's one, you create, you add to your list an any, uh, cat, two dog, three, a bird, otherwise we throw an exception. So the program crashes. Okay? Hmm. You like this piece of code? But you might really like it. It's a matter of taste. So, but like or don't like, this is not a, a valid argument to say this is not fine. We need concrete arguments to say this is not good. And the point is, what about all the other clients that are consuming our animals who share the same, sorry if I go back, who share the same semantics of so one for cat, two for dog, three for bird. I have 10,000 clients who are using this trivial library. Are they supposed to write a switch every time? It took me three minutes to write this. No. It might take you three minutes, I don't know, but it, it's time. And you don't like and repeating is not yeah, and repeating code is error prone and is not maintainable because if tomorrow your boss says yeah now three is for dog and two is for bird and you already deliver ten pro fifty programs with the same piece of code, you have to put by hand and change to commit this change everywhere. So it's it's not maintainable. It's not and what if you add your animals? So it's, it's a lot of work. So, the MIMO solution seems neither maintainable nor flexible. Maintainable because if you add, if you make small changes, then you have to apply it everywhere. Yeah. And flexible it's because you can't add stuff without adapting, adapting without making the same change. So it's Okay. So we wish to isolate this instantiation logic, the one with the wire and switches and everything, so that it becomes reusable. Okay? Because if you notice so far, every design pattern, but actually all the, the, the trajectory that we have been so far, we started from the student language, and then we noticed, yeah, we can capture words into one word, and then we said there are three words that we can express in one word. And then we saw patterns on the structure, the, the structure of, of, of the film, and we capture them into a, data, into a data type, and so on, and so on, and so on. And again, and if you think about it, every time we saw something that was repeated, we captured it so to, to say it just once. And here is the same thing, wish to say just once, this is the code for creating an animal, use it everywhere. So the same philosophy. So it would be ideal to add such logic in a way in the only point where it makes sense and where it's common to all concrete animals the interface and and okay we will really pick ourselves interface do not allow this because the interface is not allowed to start so we can use special purpose classes to 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 express such an instantiation mechanism. And I think you already made a connection. What can we use? What are these special classes? The abstract classes. It's, it's, it's okay. That's the answer. So, and yeah, the solution is we can use abstract classes. Who can tell me why? The next slide is the, the slide about uh, how to build it. But what is your idea? Remember, abstract classes allow you to define classes with, uh, man, with that allow you to, to define classes with empty bodies and so only signatures, and also bodies with uh, methods with body. So in the case of the aim, what how can we use it? Yeah. Uh, you could, for example, um, tell the animal to move. Uh, if you have a method move in there, it could be different from, for every animal. For example, you So we keep that as a signature. 
Yeah. So you can uh, make a list of animals, and then you can use the same method on every kind of animal that exists. And what about the instantiation logic? Um, By instantiation logic, I mean this block of code. What do we do with it? So you said we, we, we define we, we can promote animal to become abstract, and then we leave the make sound signature as it is, and then. So, we can make the animal abstract because they, we have pieces that are signatures, like the make sound, and we have that blob of code for the sensation, which we can anyways put in the abstract class as well. We like it once. But there is uh, something more to say. And there's something important to say is that this block of code for the, with the switches okay, becomes body a body of an instantiate function which is static okay because remember you can't instantiate in, uh, directly an abstract class okay so an abstract class can't have a constructor yeah but only the in the, the, the class that inherits the abstract class mm -hmm. can call it the weapon okay but the point is that okay I can call it but then what if I say in fire fire is still a signature so it's not possible so the only way to call a constructor of an abstract class is by means of the class that inherits this abstract class so this base you can call it only inside the class that inherits the abstract class Okay. In this case, we say that uh, the uh, the method that construct a weapon is protected, which means that only the entities that inherit it can be, can consume it. Okay. Did you understand this question? No. Yes. He asked if you have something like um, By this way, you're avoiding the instantiation of directly class A or something like that. Or Why it's not possible? But this way, by this way, you avoid it. Or no, no? I mean, this way we can do it. It's possible. Yeah. It's Why? Fine. 
because uh, here we are saying exactly, first of all, all the methods of the class A are implemented by class B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's obvious, yeah. there are no methods. So. But look, if we, for example, define an abstract method, so pa uh, public for uh, test, uh, and that's it. Ah, public test. Okay? Look, now it's saying, if B is the leaf of this, because you can have a hierarchy of abstract classes, mm -hmm. and if B is the leaf, so the last element of this hierarchy, mm -hmm. and if you go through all this hierarchy, it, the C sharp compiler says, hey, B is the leaf of this hierarchy, and none of the upper types, including B, implements test. Look, if I put the mouse over, it says B does not implement the inherited test. Okay? So there is no way that this program runs because if I try to run it, okay, it will give a compiler compilation error. So what it's saying here is that if you want to call to say new B, then you must be sure that all the abstract methods, so all the signatures are implemented. Because if not, then the risk is that I can do something like this, print test. Okay? And this is not possible. It's void, so we can do this assign. Okay? Is it understandable? So the only way to move forward is that you have to say public uh, say public override test and then here you can say uh, and here you can say uh, so. and now everything is everyone is happy and you can run it and it says Okay. Or if you want inside of B, you can of course use uh, the attribute uh, of the same. So say uh, you know, and, uh, I don't know. And here inside look, you can use it. So say uh, it's easy because it's in there. You run it? Print one. Yes. Okay? Here? Okay. So, let's go back. So, we were here. No? Here. So, now, because to consume an abstract class, you have to instantiate it, but again, we don't know what animal to select. Okay? So, we can call instantiate directly, we need the, imagine this is instantiate, what is it, test is instantiate, okay, with the, it's not abstract but it has some stuff inside, what's from here, oh yeah, so we have instantiate with our Our instantiation logic. Okay, we managed to put it in, in the abstract class, so it's common to all three. But now, if you if you want to use it, we need an instance of V of a concrete class. So again, it's not fine. It's not what we want. So let's complain. Ah, this is uh, instantiation. But this is not what we want. Because what we wanted was to say. Given A, so the super tag, I wish to use instantiate, but we can't call it new A. So what we do is, okay, this is a very ugly thing, but it is a design pattern. We make instantiate static. Okay, so we put it at polymorphic level, static, so it's common to all animals. What does this mean? This means that if you promote it static, now, 
we don't need anymore an instance of A. We just need the name A. That's A, and then we can call instance shape. We don't need anymore the, the complete type history yeah, to use. Okay? Is it clear or not clear? Okay. So, uh, yeah, here, instance shape is static since we cannot pull it directly by means of an instance in the heap. Yeah, and also because anyone is out. And uh, yeah, we can leave make sound as signature, so whoever implements animal, or in this case extends animal, has to provide also a make sound body. So and uh, here is the example. So short, we have now the animal, which is abstract. We define the function instantiate, okay, with a switch that we had earlier. So this way you have just one entry point where all clients can use to instantiate our animals. And you leave the make sound abstract. In this way you force whoever implements your animal to implement also the make sound. Okay? So now for example if you want to instantiate, you say animal to instantiate, then you provide a number. The result is an input, it is an animal. Okay? And once we have this animal, we can say the big sound. And then that is what we say now. We have an example. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. and the cat, dog, and bird, the, their structure stays the same. Except you have to say override for the big sound. Good. So in the last version of animal, we managed to define the sensation logic at polymorphic level, okay, in our case animal, instead of carrying such tasks in all times. So repeating is not good. So now there is only one entry point we can, where we can create our concrete animals. So this is a very good, it's a great achievement. Ah, very fast question. Do you remember the difference between methods, static and Oh, sorry, static functions and methods. Who does it know? So, remember in Python we have methods and functions? Hmm? It's the same. Static methods are one one with the functions of Python. And methods are one one with the methods of Python classes. Okay? If you don't hear it, well, to call instantiate, we, we didn't say new animal, we just said the, the package animal, because you can have lots of instantiate, but you want to say not any instantiate, but the instantiate which is in animal. Okay? Boom, the instantiate. Yeah. So this is literally a function call. Whereas the other way around, if you say, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? I think somewhere here. Uh, yeah, even here, if you say animals to add, in this case, animals is an instance of a list, of a generic list. And when you say add, then you should immediately connect. This add is not a static function. But it's a method, and it makes sense because we are adding this cat not in all lists of the world, but just in the list which is referred by this animal. So if you have 10,000 animals lists in your memory, you're going to select and pick up just one, and this is the one that we are, we are going to put inside. Yeah. Good. Considerations. Okay, last second. So whenever now a client wishes to see shape, an animal, it has to ask animal. An animal is the only one who is, I mean, aware of how to create them. Of course, then you can write your own switch and do whatever you want. But at least in this way, you manage to fix a lot of repetition problems. So we can say that animal is not only the polymorphic type of our concrete animals, but it's also a factory of animals. Okay? And uh, 
In particular, this is the sheet in maintenance belongs to the so-called simple factory method design factory. Okay? Good. So, what are we going to do now in this second part of the class, of the second part of the class, is uh, we are going to study other factories, because there are three design fact three factories, design patterns. Okay, they are all called factory patterns, but there are three, and they differ from each other on the amount of freedom, because you will see now what is the limitation. Well, actually, what do you think is the problem of this simple design factory? This simple factory one. Think about it. Let's go back to the animal case. Maybe if you have a number of inputs instead of typing cat, for example? Mm, no. On C. Sorry? On C. Uh, uh, it's a global function. No. If there were like a lot of animals added, you need to uh, add that to the if else block. And that's, yeah, that's repetition, sort of. No. Or because it's static? Sorry? Or because, it, because it's static? Okay, we're getting closer. What does it mean? If you say something is static, what, what is the implication? It doesn't change everywhere, something like that. But it does, it is the same everywhere. So maybe yeah. at first that doesn't change, I like it, so investigate more. Maybe each concrete animal needs different parameters? No. But let's stay on doesn't change. What doesn't change? Can you override the methods? Inherited in methods? Have you done no methods overriding with Z? You know that if you inherit a, a class, you can redefine the methods. Remember? Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure this show you. If you have something like this, let's bring this to class. Example, you say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Say hi. Mm -hmm. For example, if you want, you can very nice say hi. Let me see. example, I'm happy with hello, then I leave it as it is. If I have a special case for whatever reason, then I can override it. Actually, he's also telling you here, if you are overriding it, then you should, it's telling you, hey, your say hi is highly the one above. Is this what you want? If you leave it, then you are telling the C-sharp that you want to 
hide the one above to override it. Okay? Otherwise, you simply inherit it and use it. Do you think this is possible <coughs> with static classes? You don't have concrete uh, instances. Uh, yeah, because using static. once imagine you have something static here. Something uh, we have three classes. A, B, and C. Okay, and. Um, For whatever reason, this is defined static. Okay? But we know that static is something that belongs to the class, not to the instance. And now I say, okay, I want to say that I want to override it. And I define as well this static. And I also do it here. So now I compile which one should listen, C, B, or C. They are both overriding it, and this is all done before creating the classes. So it's all done during when, when, the, when the, the runtime loads the classes definition. So which one to listen to, A, B, or C? It's not possible. You can do this only if you have an instance. Then you say, hey, I am the instance. I want to override all my definitions of say hi. But it's something that is private with you. You don't share it with anybody. Because it's a function, the function is accessible everywhere, whoever, anyone can call a function. So, if I say here, B can say hi, which one should I use? The one of C, the one of B, the one of... It's not possible. And uh, this is a big issue because if you don't allow it, what happens? We don't have any more what... If you lose the possibility to override things, then we lose. Flexibility. flexibility. So, what you are doing, saying here is that only one, two, three are the only way to define our animals. But what if, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm afraid of one, of one, two, three, and I, for whatever reason, was that movie with uh, number 23? With like one from Ace, Ace and He saw that number everywhere. With Jim Carrey, what was the name? Number 23. If for whatever reason he was here and Jim Carrey, and he saw tw two and three. Oh God, see, there is two and three. So, what if he doesn't want to see two and three? He wants to change. It's not possible to be stacked as well. Deal with it. So, we wish as well that this block becomes dynamic as well. So, in interchangeable. Okay? That's what I call this a simple factory method because it's the simplest one. But it's also very, very limited. So it doesn't allow this. So we don't like it. But we will see this later. But first, formalization of the first, the simple design pattern. I forgot about the formalization. I went too much ahead. Okay, formalization. Provided the animal uh, scenario. The simple factory is called directly from the client. And uh, the method instantiate must return one of, for, it must return a, the polymorphic type, but in the body it must select a concrete one. So it returns an animal, the instantiate, but inside you select a concrete one. And of course, this method can be declared in the parent, so as the case of the abstract class, or it can be also defined as separate class. In this, I will show you the now. So let's see the example. So here is the example of the just in class with the client calls uh, the, path, the, the parent abstract, in particular calls the static create which, based on some selection mechanism, returns an entity of parent class. Okay? But in, inside this today, we call one of the concrete child. Okay? So, 
Okay. Ah, uh, this is another example of vehicles. So we have the abstract vehicle, and you have a selection mechanism. You leave abstract, you have to start and this is the same. And here are two examples. We have the guard or the vehicle. And the other way around is that you can take the create, brings it out of the abstract class, for example, as a, a static method of uh, a factory class. What does it? Let's see that the your map. Look, ah, here is missing the static. But anyway, but actually, it's not even necessary because now we can directly create an instance of simple factory. Okay. And once you have this simple factory, you can call the create and create recurrence of parent class. Okay? Here's an example. Yeah. You go, you create a vehicle factory. A vehicle factory is a factory that contains a method create, which returns a vehicle. The vehicle is the one we saw earlier with the start engine. So what you do here is you create a vehicle. Once you have the vehicle, if you want to create whenever you want a class, a car, you simply ask the vehicle to spawn your car. Then it's up to the vehicle how to spawn your car. And then once you have the car, you can say start engine. And again, the same changes from the car side. But yeah, this is just to go back to what we that the static method is not flexible. We cannot define for part of the factory. And we wish to use polymorphism as well in, in the body of the, of the, in the switch uh, block. This is the goal. And now it's not possible. So what can we do is we can make our simple factory method virtual as well. So depending on the domain, a concrete factory is selected and uh, this factory concrete implements the virtual mechanism. So for example, if you are constructors, because they all return the polymorphic type window, okay, but based on the one you select, they have different switches, different implementation for the switches. So for example here, when you say, what is it? Here when you say, for example here you can say that a Ferrari can also provide a color. Okay? So for example if you select the red Ferrari factory, then here we're gonna provide the red color. But if you select the only yellow factories, car factories, then we're going to provide you only the color yellow to make Lamborghini and Ferrari. And the same with the, with the style here. So, this mechanism of inter interchangeable uh, mechanism, this transition mechanism, okay, is called the factory method. So, nothing more simple, it's just the factory method. Okay? And we say, this is from the book. Have you bought a book? Like Angle 4? Have you downloaded it? From Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> but it's an interesting book. I, I really like it. So you have the book downloaded. So, uh, what does the author say about the factory method? It's a class which refers the sensations of an object to subclasses. So, so the factory method is a class that um, it's a class that that defers the instantiation of the theme to subclasses, so to the concrete classes, to concrete themes. Okay? So I am the window, I don't know what to create, so what I do is I defer the sensation of high contrast or window style, whatever, to the complete subclasses. 
And again, this is achievable only by polymorphism. So what we are going to do is we are going to make a factory as well polymorphic. So the instantiation of the instantiation as well becomes polymorphic. And here is a formalization, and there is also an example. So given a polymorphic type I, so this is the, the window, so what we want to instantiate. Given a series of concrete classes, high contrast, uh, windows classic style, uh, windows 10, uh, flowers for the girls, for yeah, or not. On this kind. Huh? On this kind. Flowers on this kind. Yes. So, given these, this is your setup, this is what we wish. So what do we do is we define a factory, okay? I, polymorphic, that has a method create which returns or instantiate which returns an instance